Well, what's up? Matt Wyatt here. You don't say. It's about that time. The last in this series of videos studying Tua, Tua Tonga-Valoa, all 77 pass attempts this year for the freshman QB from Alabama. So here you are, gonna look at the fourth quarter and overtime of the national title game, the season finale, the last 11 throws of uh, his freshman campaign. And you know, at this point, he'd thrown touchdowns at such a rapid clip. Didn't you see the signs? That anybody who had followed it throughout the year, followed him. I saw the signs. Probably knew, Alabama fans probably knew he was going to make some exciting things happen in the past game. Now, the previous video in the series here, and I'll link it for you here, uh, was the throws in the third quarter that kind of set up what he was able to do in the fourth quarter, get the game tied, get it to overtime, and then we know what happened there. So let's get to it. Let's look at the fourth quarter throws in the title game. How many? He threw the ball 10 times in that fourth quarter against Georgia. 10 it is. And then, of course, after that, we know, all know, about his one throw in overtime. Just one. First pass attempt of the fourth quarter, 67th throw of the year. They're down 10 here, and they are got to make this comeback. Go motion this side, and he's your underneath route once he gets over here. Get a zone corner on this side and a man lock up on this side. So he's reading the zone side of the field, and he just comes underneath. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it because TV doesn't give you a great look downfield, but open underneath, first throw is a completion in the fourth quarter. First down after a nice run. Next throw in the ball game uh, on the same series, they saw the coverage where they locked up on the single receiver side and went zone to the tight end side, so they call screen up there up top. They can, they can get somebody dropped, and they do get a two-on-one block in front and allows a guy to catch the ball with an accurate throw and make yards on screenplay. Third throw of the game, 69th throw on the year. It's after a long run. They're down here uh, in the red zone, a chance to score. Three receivers side, and they're going to try to get a guy open. The way they do it is underneath to pull out a defender, inside release here to the middle, and then wheel it with the number two inside, get him open in the back, and it pretty much works, gets him open. See number three coming underneath is going to pull this defender out of the picture, and you're going to get this inside release here and wheel route. Uh, to the back corner. That's pretty good coverage down here. They recover pretty well. It makes for a really tight window. You see the ball, he's got to get it in here. Uh, and it could be a better throw. But the thing is, at this point in the game, you cannot afford a turnover here. And if it's underthrown, if the ball's underthrown, it could be picked off. So, you know, you almost don't mind. He's making sure it's back here where only his guy can get it, just a little bit of an overthrow. So it brings up his fourth throw of the game, 70th of the year, on a third down play on the same possession. And this time three receivers to the field, but with a tight end in here in that hip position. They get a zone look in the coverage. And um, what, what I guess is that the route that is called is smash route here, hitch with the corner on top in the back corner, and trying to push up and run out with the tight end and have a couple of outbreaking deals. But what happens is he's going to throw his hand up and run vertical because I think it's the position of this zone defender right in front of him who's kind of on his outside. Watch when the play starts. He gives him a shuffle and sees that he's positioned out here. So instead of trying to get outside and run a corner, he's just going to try, I guess I think it's a side adjust, where he's going to throw his hand up and get vertical and think he can beat him right there to the inside. Thing is, when he does, the route of the tight end pushes a defender right into the throwing lane. And it's, just, you know, it's a, a pretty good tight throw. The safety's coming over. So you actually wind up with three defenders. But he did beat him to the inside one-on-one. And this is a really tight, nice throw. Gives his guy a chance. So even though this safety recovers, a defender was underneath because of the other route. Um, it still gives him a chance. So sort of tight throw into a tight window. It gave him a chance on third down. Just didn't quite come up with it. So they had to settle for a field goal there. It's 20 to 13 now in his fifth throw of the ball game out here to start the next drive. Watch how they motion across with the back. He's 
coming across, a little play action mesh, and then he's going to be the underneath over here. And without seeing the whole picture, what it looks like the route to me is on this side, run off, get in between the hashes here, and then out route here at 10 yards. And so what you get is really a high low, where, in other words, if you leave this guy alone and just look at it, you're going to have a back here, an out route here, and somewhere in between a defender. And if the defender drops back here in zone, he's going to throw it underneath, and that's what happens. The other thing is that little play action where he steps up and then steps back, and it kind of gets him on a little bit of a string where he steps up and then gets back in coverage. And as soon as he saw him you know, retreat, he goes ahead and unloads the ball to his back with space to room. Uh, with space to run. Now, here's a key. If you make this bad throw, if it's on his back shoulder and the back has to turn around to catch it, or if it's high and he has to slow up, this guy's going to come in here and make this play around the line of scrimmage. But because it's an accurate throw, it looks simple, but if you do those little things right, now he can catch it with a chance to make a guy miss, and that's what he does. And that's what backs should do if you get it in their chest. The sixth throw in this fourth quarter is his 72nd pass of the year. And they're against zone here, cover two zone, just running verticals on second and nine, but they get a big old whiff by the right tackle and pass pro. Spin move right there, and now he's free. He'd already put his eyes here kind of on the short side where he knows he's got cover two, and I think what he's wanting to see is, am I going to get a hole shot right here? But he has no time to really think about it. Blown uh, protection, he's got a twist out of there, just throw it away. 73rd throw of the year is his seventh throw of the fourth quarter. They go two by two with a tight end into the boundary to his right, pistol formation. And Georgia gives him a 3-4 defensive look, and they roll it to a cover three. So the safety's coming up on the snap, and he's in. And so by cover three, you have deep third, deep third, deep third responsibility. Look at the route, how they get him crossed up on play act. After the fake, you got uh, max protection. The back is staying in and the tight end staying in, so seven-man protection. And on the hash here, he's going across the field. And on the back side, he's coming across the field. So they're crossing them in the middle, and it's all about getting time. And if you get time, it's going to be hard to cover him coming across. And what happens is the zone corner does drop deep enough to let him get open coming across to the short side of the field, and he hits him. Big play. Now, TV gave you a nice look from behind. You kind of see what the quarterback sees. Enough play action look there just to kind of keep those linebackers underneath, which is where you want them. And he's going to get across here, and they're going to cross pass right in front of that safety who's trying to get back into the middle of the field and his responsibility in cover three. This zone corner back here, when he saw the guy go underneath and nobody else in his zone, he's kind of getting back there into that deep third, which opens that territory for that crosser to come underneath and have a little room and a throwing lane to make the big play. His eighth throw of this fourth quarter, 74th pass of the year. They're down here in the red zone, motioning the back out to empty and watch the defender run step for step with him to get out there and cover it. Let's you know it's man to man coverage. So it lets you know this linebacker is covering the back and man to man. Now he knows it's man-to-man -man coverage all the way across with a free safety in the middle, right? So it'll be five-on-five five in protection. And what they get what they want, and that is an open route from the uh, three-receiver side, one-on-one -on -one into that back corner with an angle in the end zone. They're in the choice here underneath, choice here underneath, and he's getting to that back corner taking the one-on-one. -on -one. And look at the timing of this. He's letting the ball go back here at the 20 while his receiver is only five yards into his route and has got about 15 yards to go. So if you think about it, the ball's about to come out. He's got 15 yards to go before he really even gets to his spot in the end zone. So it's a timing throw, first of all. And the second thing is it's really tight man-to-man -man coverage. And it's a freshman QB getting the ball out on time, not waiting and throwing a jump ball and puts it in a spot where only his guy has a chance. Again, right on the outside shoulder. You don't make the play, but only his guy had a chance. That's a really good throw. His ninth throw of this fourth quarter is his 75th of the year. It's a play we all remember where they tied the game down here 
uh, under four minutes in the fourth quarter. Empty with three receivers and a tight end to the field, two receivers into that boundary, running what they run all year long with him, and that is double slants. And that's where he wants to go with the football to begin with. First thing is, covered here by the uh, bracket on the inside defender and no angle on the outside as well. This is game plan scouting by Georgia going, if they're on the goal line, they're going to run double slants and they cover it up. Freshman quarterback looks and now he's got to peel out of there and make a play. So the next thing to watch, watch right here how the Georgia defender gets away with a holding by pulling the tight end back off of his route. So he completely pulls him off his feet uh, they're going to miss that call. And now he's got to peel out of there and go make a play over here to his left. We'll see it from behind. What he sees is his running back who'd motioned out or was lined up out, coming out of the back of the end zone, trying to get him the football, not really open. There's the running back he's trying to get it to. And instead, Ridley comes from the back of the end zone out of nowhere and catches it for a TD. A really a, a fortunate play, but a great play by the receiver. So again, his eyes are to the two receiver side. Obviously, he's got those double slants. They've game plan, knows he's going to throw it. They bracket the inside. He's got nowhere here. He's got no throwing lane here. So it's either throw it away or come back this way and make a play. Uh, his tight end's not going to be open underneath because he gets pulled off of his route. And then just watch his eyes. He's going to see that outside receiver backside. His eyes are here, thinks he's got a throwing lane. Defender is really recovering, and if the ball had gotten back there to him, you probably would have a pass interference here from Georgia, or maybe anyway. There would have been some early contact, and it's definitely who he's throwing the ball to. But here comes Ridley, um, who's completely hidden by the defenders, and Snatches it out of the air for a touchdown. His 10th throw this fourth quarter, 76 pass of the year. They're trying to go down here and kick a field goal to win the game in the last minute or so. And uh, Georgia rotates this to um, kind of a man-free look where they go man-to-man -man underneath, use a sideline to help, and put a free safety in the middle. I don't know what the call is, um, but it looks like to me verticals with the option choice routes on the outside based on what the defense does. So if you get bump man and you can beat him, you beat him. But if you get a drop corner, you're going to pull that thing up at eight yards like it's a choice route. And I think that's what he chooses into the short side of the field. We saw this all year with him, and that is underneath stuff, he likes the short side of the field, especially when it's to his right as a lefty. His shoulders are already there. So what he reads is short side of the field, corner, uh, staying on top to not get beat deep. And when he does, the receiver's just going to pull it up right there, and he fires it in there for um, close to a first down. So those yeah. 10 fourth-quarter throws, and the last of which got him down there in field goal range to try the game-winning field goal as time was going to expire, and... No! Hooked it! So we're going to overtime, tie ball game. But the fourth-quarter stats really do tell the story of how... Tonga Valo and that offense were able to tie the game. So when you look at that fourth quarter, just kind of fourth quarter stats in the ballgame, a couple of things jump out at you, and that is Alabama outscored Georgia in that fourth quarter 10-zip but outgained them by over 100 yards. And then the passing numbers in that fourth quarter, Tonga Valo a 6 of 10 through the one touchdown. And so here's the final play of overtime, last throw of the year for him, the 11th throw of the second half in overtime. And it's the three by one, and the one receiver catches it. There's those two safeties for Georgia. And um, we'll hear what he said. And he says he lined up and he saw the safety on the hash, knew that he could hold his head here and then come back and throw that route to the other side of the field. Get those verticals up the hash. Tight end number three is getting across the face of the safety and running that vertical against that cover two. And sure enough, yeah, his eyes are here to begin with and then flip and make that throw. And you get a couple different angles. You can see how Georgia really messed it up. Initially, you have a safety doing what he's supposed to do, and that is regardless of the quarterback putting his eyes over here on this side of the field, he's getting back or trying to get back on top to his zone and cover two zone, one there and one there. It's supposed to split that field. 
But once he takes that drop and holds his eyes over on this side, now you see that safety peel back and stay on the hash. And I think also the threat of a tight end coming in here uh, kind of makes him want to stay there. And again, all year long, and this is the last throw of the year for him, the ball is just coming out on time. Once he flipped his head, he's already setting to put this thing back here where only his guy can get it. There's no hesitation at all. And by this time, because of the free release inside, too, there was no bump by the corner. Um, you get an open guy and a perfect throw on a dead rope for a touchdown. So again, on the snap, he's a little far inside. Ball's on the hash, and so he senses that. i got to make sure I'm here and get back here. But then the eyes of the QB fool him. As soon as he goes extended drop and he's still looking at this side, now you saw that safety peel back towards the hash a little bit. And the other thing is here, corner is watching quarterback as opposed to slamming that receiver in cover two at about that four-yard mark. So now there's no contact. He's free release. The safety held in here because of his, you know, holding his head there. And then instincts tell him, put it on him, and it's a perfect throw can't draw it up any better and you certainly can't throw that any better they had split they had split safety you know the safety on on Devante side on the single receiver side I tried to disguise his coverage I tried to look him off he stayed in the middle and then I went back outside it was a cover two on their side so final stats in the game for Tonga Valoa something jumps out he's 14 of 24 throwing the ball and then he carried the ball 12 times as well more than twice as much as anybody else so this freshman Playing in the second half was responsible for 36 of the 71 offensive plays or just over half of the offensive plays in the game eventually went through to a Tonga Valoa. Tonga Valoa finished the year having played in nine games. He went 49 of 77 passing. So 63% on just a few pass attempts, 636 yards. 11 touchdowns, two interceptions. And that's significant because that means that he threw a touchdown for every seven pass attempts. Every seven times you put it in the air, he throws a TD. Now on the ground, you know, decent stats, but not anything spectacular. He rushed it 27 times on the year for 133 yards, two touchdowns, averaged about 4.9 yards per carry. And those are his final stats on the year. Look, really hope you enjoyed the series. I've got it all in a playlist here on my YouTube channel. So just go to my playlist and you'll see it studying Tua and it's all 77 pass attempts for him throughout the year, which will include this final video in this series as well. Do me a favor, subscribe here on Facebook. I really appreciate that. Like the video. And then if you haven't checked out my Facebook page, it's facebook.com slash Radio Wyatt as well. And then anytime you want, tweet me, hit me up on Instagram. I appreciate that also. You can find me at Radio Wyatt. All right. Thanks for watching. See you next time.